I'm telling you why you should pick a very silly something like that. Because when it doesn't happen, you'll realize that God didn't answer you by a sign. When you pick something too normal, you end up thinking you've been guided by a sign when all that really happened is you didn't go after his counsel. When you didn't go after his counsel and didn't use your judgment, you just ended up guiding yourself and then deluding yourself into thinking that you were being guided by him. And yeah, it's a very nasty trick, the prayed and prayed trick. Our trick number nine this morning, I don't have time to speak about it, so I'm just going to tell you what it is and tell you where you can get resources on it. It has to do with, with pain. Why did God let it happen is the idea. The, the trick is, I called it God let it happen trick. It's the idea that God can't be trusted or I don't want to serve him or something because of some terrible thing in my experience. Maybe my parents got a divorce. That, that's how often it is for 12 or 13 year olds. And really for older people too, but that's where it often starts. God let it happen. At that website, BibleDoc.org, I have two articles. One, on, it's on why. Why God allows things to happen. And I have another one on how to deal with pain. How to deal with the problems that have come your way. Those are both relevant. Has this scourge come to northeast Washington where some young people are cutting themselves as a way of dealing with pain? Does that come up here? It's, it's really, it's moved around. If it has, I really recommend that young people and parents read that second article on how to deal with pain. But for the questions of why did God allow it and how to deal with it, the devil has a bag of tricks that are well exposed in those resources. Also at the Washita Hills website, um, there are some archives of prayer meetings and, when the, and I did a prayer meeting on this just two weeks ago. They'll probably be there in a few weeks. You could watch it if you have high-speed internet. You could just see it. But why am I not talking about it here? Because just talk, telling you where to find it took three minutes. And to talk about it would take another hour. It's, it deserves more attention than that. The tenth one this morning, which isn't the last. I plan to go to get to twelve. The tenth one is, I call it the slippery slopes trick. If you could picture it this way, many young people that grow up in a conservative environment especially, they know quite a few don'ts just from having been in the society for a while. And you probably know, because you live in this area, that not all the conservative families have the same don'ts. Does that make any sense to you when I'm communicating? There are various don'ts in the families. The devil will often tell a young person that if he is going to be conscientious, he's going to have to go all the way. In other words, if he's willing to give up this music, it won't be long until he will have given up every single thing that's important to him. And the devil tries to paint the path of conscientiousness as if it is something like penance. I don't know how to describe it as, as I know it's in the minds of so many young people. As if it's going to, you can almost see a sign if you want plight, read white. You, if, you, if you admit that it's wrong, freedom is gone. As if there are picketers who are saying don't pass that threshold of conscientiousness. It's the slippery slope trick. The devil telling you that you're going to lose everything if you, if you choose to be conscientious. Part of this trick is an extreme exaggeration of the fun to ride from doing wrong. You might enjoy serving your lusts and going after your pleasures. You probably could enjoy it a little bit for a while but it really isn't nearly as much fun as you pretend it is. It really isn't nearly as satisfying as the devil portrays it as being. Really, it isn't such a great thing that you're giving up. In fact, those who have given it up 
have said that they count those things as trash. Yeah, dung, the same idea, right? They count those things as worthless for what they gained. And what you're going after, you remember, is real treasures, things like love and peace and joy. These are, these are substantial things, that you're, the benefits that you gain. To gain love and joy and peace over consecrating that thing that you know is wrong is a beautiful trait. And you can't really be sure that all of the don'ts you've heard about are legit until you've researched them for yourself. Really, the only thing for you to do is to trust that God loves you and knows best. And to one by one, to do the things he's asked for, and what you get is that love and joy and peace. Yeah, the slippery slope is an imaginary thing. Really, his ways are... What did we read earlier in Psalms? Pleasantness. There's pleasures forevermore there. There's a lot more about the slippery slope trick. Um, it's in that article. I want to get to three more that are really important. Let me read two more. Number 11 is the duty to your family trick. Many young people and even middle-aged people when they are struggling with some issue in their life, hold back on full consecration because of their desire to win their family. I've been talking to a young lady this year in California, some, who she was struggling with novels, for example. And then, as, just as she decided to stop reading them, at Christmas time, two different relatives of her, trying to be very careful, purchased for her beautiful moral teaching pieces of fiction. And what did the devil tell her? That to not accept those when she's surely going to see them, they're going to ask her how she enjoyed them, when they picked them out just to meet her needs, just to help you understand the pressure the devil's putting on here. This is very much manipulation, what the devil does in this kind of situation. It's just low-down manipulation, but that is what he always does, and you can't be surprised when he does it. But the pressure on her is that it, if she doesn't read those, it'll make her look like a real fanatic to these people who don't even understand her values at all. Do you understand what the devil is saying to her? And I just want to reply to her and to the general, situation by, the general situation by telling you about Lot. Lot was in Sodom. And Lot hesitated to leave Sodom because he didn't want to lose his family. He was hesitant to move out in a hurry because he didn't want to lose his wife in particular. But what we learn in Patriarchs and Prophets is he did not understand at all how to help his family. When he hesitated, he communicated to them that he wasn't even as believing and sincere about his values as he was with his words. And if he had, with great zeal, left Sodom, his words would have hung around in the mind of his wife and would have trembled there and would have vibrated until she had realized that he was, if he was willing to leave over this, he must really believe about this. And she would have got up and left also, and Lot's wife would not have died. I guess what I'm saying to the young and old here is that the best way you can serve your families is to be true to your convictions. When you are true to your convictions, even at the risk of offending or hurting, I don't mean you can be mean in how you do it. Not at all. We'll talk more about that later today. But when you're true to your convictions, only that communicates that you even really believe what you say you believe. And any other type of activity just undermines whatever you've tried to preach to them in the past. 
Ellen White talks about this in one other way that's significant. She talks about people who have haunted homes. I believe in haunted homes, but not even do I think homes are haunted because some spirit likes to live there because of someone who died ages back. That is the superstitious haunted home. Would you like to know about the real haunted home? It goes like this. You are trying to do evangelism. You're giving Bible studies. The man you're studying with is just making a decision. He's on the verge of coming into the truth. And then the devil moves on some family member at a distance to call and tell you that they desperately need you to help them with some issue or problem in their life. And when that happens, if you leave the field of labor and the struggling person to go help your family, the devil is no dull scholar. He knows now what button to push to get you to do what needs to be done. And your family becomes a haunted home. I mean, whenever the devil wants to slow you down, he will irritate that vulnerable part of your experience. When Ellen White, if you want to find this, you can do a search in the Ellen White CD-ROM on let the dead bury their dead. It's around those statements Ellen White talks about this haunted home concept. What she writes there is that if, on the other hand, you will stay true to your duty and help the struggling soul, the angels from heaven will be commissioned to help with your family and will do more there than you could have done with your own presence. And they will say to the devil, stand back. And you know, if you say it, it doesn't help a bit. But if they say it, it makes quite a difference. So there are another 16 tricks that we're not talking about at all in this series of lectures that I think you'd be worthwhile to look over them. And you can find those at BibleDoc.org. Let me summarize briefly, and we'll close this morning's session. Everything I've said really can be summarized very simply, that we're going to have to go after the data ourselves. We're going to have to do the research ourselves. Nothing of our other methods of finding it is going to work. We can't find it by consensus. We can't find it by choosing a reliable authority. We can't get there by balancing between the two extremes. We can't get there by our impulses or imaginations or feelings. We can't get there by praying for a, a sign or by praying and praying that God will give us permission to do such and such or we'll stop or block our way from getting there, we can't find God's will that way. We're gonna have to go to the source. The devil will do anything to get us to bypass the only thing that'll work. He gave us reasoning, not to reason without it, but to reason from it. That's what thinking is. If we're gonna learn to think for ourselves, this is what it's all about. Learning to gather the data, to think through what it says, using the mind we've been given, and in that way, God will guide us to the path he wants us to follow. He says, don't be like the horse or the mule that must be kept in with bit and bridle. He would like to guide us with his counsel by his eye and in that way lead us to the very place he would like us to be. Let's bow our heads for a closing prayer. Our Father in heaven, I ask that you will bless the sessions we have later on today especially. That you would teach us what is right and best. And I ask that whatever I've shared this morning that is true, that you would impress that upon the minds of those that are here. That you would give power to your holy Bible. And I ask for this gift in the name of Jesus. Amen.